The Hanabi works better with a hero that can give her that shield or someone that can give the Aegis. We don't see that happening as, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we're going straight into the portal of game number one between RRQ Hoshi and Bigatron Alpha. And once again, looking back, how is this going to work? Hanabi is such an immobile hero. She needs something like the Matilda to aid her in that mid lane. Well, Marky's acting like a very good bully against the Claude right now. You can already see the bullying happen very early on. Marky has brought the Flicker as well, and he's dealing out this much damage onto the Claude, forcing a recall and a BMI reset for the Claude. As you can see, just Skyler needing to get more resources. He just uses the BMI, comes back to it. And the thing is about the Hanabi, something also changed with her, right? You know how her shurikens can actually like bounce off each other? Uh -huh. It now bounces onto the turret as well. So she's also going to be able to get a lot of that gold shield turret when she goes in for the attack, basic attacks on the minions. Oh my god, Skylar, he's not winning in this trade at all. BTR Aldo with its magic on Season 9 and Season 10 makes Onik has the best or widest hero pool. And we're kind of seeing that style already for BTR, right, Turner? We're seeing it live right now, and in the bottom side, that bouncing off the tower that you're talking about, Eterna, has shown to be so annoying for Sky to deal with. And maybe he just didn't respect the potential in the early game, but Lemon here, going against Beer, not doing that, uh, not doing that bad, but of course, Vigatron is known to try and abuse this. Whoa, that's a very aggressive play by Beer, forcing the flicker out already. That's gonna be the... Cannon minion cleared out, still getting that XP, but Bigatron Alpha in that top side already losing out. Meanwhile, the winning lane for Bigatron Alpha in the bottom lane, still Marky just shoving constantly again. And with the Equinox, it's actually gonna be really good for the Hanabi. No CC effects onto him. Meanwhile, the turtle side, the Blast will be targeted by Key with a flicker as well. On towards Albert there, who's gonna be stunned up. That's a petrified. That's all of the abilities popped in, but Clay finds a kill on the Mark in the bottom lane. Oh! Albert finds the appraiser's wrath, and it's a double kill over to the baby alien. Key and Fear No Cure able to find one back on the board. Lemon gonna go in onto Key right now, who's gonna be forced back up. Fear No Cure with the onward and the Earth Shatter not able to kill Lemon just yet as Clay has rotated back in towards that top side. Albert picks up the first turtle and it's a disaster for Bigatron Alpha. Mess with the Kings and you get put down. RRQ assert their dominance in that early game. And also getting the first blood all the way across the map. What a performance there. And I think the fact that they were unable to secure the kill on Albert fast enough allowed that turnaround to happen. And Bigatron got way too aggressive and they clumped in together way too much as we take a look at the instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. And look at that. Three members all caught in by Lemon and Albert. And that appraiser's wrath is devastating. Taking out two members and Vin almost gets out. So as we talked about this earlier, the setup seems to be for Bigatron, but the execution, how they're able to just beat the odds is very much in favor of RRQ. Yeah, right now RRQ leading with a 1,800 gold lead. And the one thing that I want to mention about the gold lane is the situation is going to change as long as Skylar hits that level four, he gets that blazing duet, and then he'll be able to charge onto Marky. And we see that being reflected very heavily as RRQ Hoshi, they are looking for a oh. pickup here in the bottom lane. That's the Higan Bana, and also the Dumana Blast pop in. Vin gonna be able to escape. Two massive resources burnt out for Bigatron Alpha, and it's still RRQ holding the 2,000 gold lead, which is continually going to build. Remember, the Farsa with the pressure is always gonna be able to rotate with the wings by wings faster than the mid lane. But their airstrike popped in. Marky able to get out of that one. He as well dashing out from the last other airstrike. His max rotates down below. Vir no cure. Oh. Finds an onward and an earth shatter. Only on to Albert. That's the frontliner. Very, very oh. low. But Vir as well with the appraiser spread is going to fall with the help of Clay. RRQ picks another up down below. Wow, these onwards are so, so aggressive. And early on the top side, we saw that it actually puts Lemon in a good spot to actually punish the aggression. And now we're seeing it again with so many front lines. There's so only so many heroes that that onward can target effectively and you know beneficially for the side of Bigatron. Take a look at the emblem so far. There's no real big difference that's just crazy. But the amount of avarices on the side of RRQ means that they are going to try and get to those power spikes way, way earlier. And I think we're seeing the impact of that right now as they go for the turtle. Yeah, everything's going to clash in that mid game, right? When all those 
heroes are going to be able to get that mid lane power spike, especially waiting on Claude Skyler to come online. And even before that, we already see the dominance that RRQ Hoshi is showing and putting onto Bigatron Alpha. So what's going on? Why is this happening? Did Bigatron Alpha draft themselves with a losing early to mid game? Or is the execution from RRQ just way too strong? Okay. Kingdom Now Blast comes in onto Skylar there, but while Charge is able to cancel out a bit of the damage, Rough Waves and the Petrify onto Skylar, but he's still able oh. to survive with 1 HP! Skylar again with the magical plays! Max gonna be caught here, taunted up, and the Appraiser's Wrath practically seals the deal for a Clay to pick up a killing spree. Wow, I feel like that's just it, right? Bigot and Alpha are not having the right composition to try and match our Q in the early game. Glue, Grok, Fredrin and Farsa. These are all heroes with a lot of AoE, with a lot of scrapping potential, and RRQ are just pulling Bigatron Alpha into their tempo. If Bigatron Alpha wants to try and have a good chance, I guess they can try and use Max to try and secure these neutral objectives, but they have to try and let all these other members scale and get power spikes. Otherwise, later on, they won't be a significant threat in the back line of RRQ. Lemon. Going a little bit aggressive here. Numa Blast gonna be charged in. That's gonna be the rotation for Moreno as well. But the split split can be channeled in time, and Lemon gets out. I mean, look at. Did you see that emote? Like even under the ultimate <laughs> coming in, he was confident enough to say, "You know what? You can Numa Blast me all you want. I'm still gonna get out, and I'm still gonna be Pretty able good. to push for my team." Meanwhile, you guys are distracted. Look at Skylar just munching in that top side, being able to get a turret and half the HP of the second tier turret. So RRQ Hoshi, they really are so active on the map, really playing the map to the utmost potential that they could. Wow, if you want to support the teams like the Kermit in the car right now, you just grab, but look at that play. Alba is way too tanky. Man, once again, all alone, Alba can be shredded down. That's a decimate for BTR, picking up one kill on the board. They're finally here taking a kill. Lemon. Jumps into the slam, slam, pass, pass. Gonna be knocked up and onward. Vin gonna be able to find the wild charge right now. Ski's gonna be able to channel them now. Flash onto two! And that's the AoE damage! Skyler finds a trade back. That's gonna be a neutral objective for the side of Bigatron Alpha. Max finally taking one back for himself. But Skyler now, with a very aggressive move, is gonna be able to pop that Purify to step out with a BMI. And Lemon still staying. Gets knocked up with the Earth Shatter and gets taken down by the water from Moreno. You can say that Ark Hoshi, they're starting to get a little bit hasty in the team fights, right? Because they know in the late game, this Hanabi is going to have a huge advantage over their composition. And right now, seven, almost eight minutes in, you can already start to feel the damage that she has, realizing that she already has a Corrosion Scythe as well as a DHS. She'll be able to do a lot of percentage HP damage with every basic attack onto RRQ, and that's a big deal if you have three very beefy members on your side. But that aside, you can see that for both mid laners, it's been pretty pretty chill and they don't have the lightning crunch just yet. So we haven't even seen the full brunt of the potential burst that both these members can have. Once that's available, we're gonna see a lot Ooh. more aggression, but look at that. Man, the feather airstrike almost taking Marky down. Literally, just two shots was all it took. And RQ will have a little bit more pressure to say a lot of things in the enemy jungle. Invading already, Vin opening up the map. Max, somehow, even though he was slain two times early on, is able to catch back up to level 11. Cure no cure. He's a bit behind though, even Skylar onward, gonna be able to catch Skylar, but the BMI grants him his safety. He's able to blink out. To be honest, because of the low mobility that the Hanabi has, I mean, looking at that damage from the Feather Airstrike, and that was pre-Lightning Truncheon, right? So imagine now how much damage he has, and she doesn't even have the Holy Crystal or even any penetration items built yet. Marky needs to build that Athena Shield, like ASAP, and that is that might give him a little bit of more uh -oh. durability, but Max, you have to be careful here. Uh-oh, that's the wild charge. Max is gonna be able to fall there. No, you're no cure actually flickers out just in time with the Earth Shatter cancels. Slam, 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 pass, pass. In the back line, Moreno trying to find something, but will be stunned up just a bit. Max putting some pressure down again for the rest of the team to back off. And Bigatron Alpha offended, but it's still RRQ with the more valuable resources still up. Clay, his mana is looking low though. He might have to recall here. RRQ with a 2.5k gold lead, but Big Engine Alpha is matching them in these fights, in this aggression. If RRQ can't get a decisive kickoff, it's going to be very difficult for them to deal with the increasingly high DPS coming in from Bigatron. And on top of the big combo coming in from Key on the Numenon Blast, but he might just be in trouble right here. 
Wild charge, everything in the kitchen sink thrown at Key. And he's gonna fall here in the mid lane. Bottom side, River Bush. Bottom side, we do see a shove from the side of Marky, but now Vir no Cure, he's all alone. He's trying to look for some, an opening. Pops the ultimate, dealing a little bit of damage to Lemon, but he has a split split. Meanwhile, Max, again, that's gonna be Skyler jumping out to Marky. It's a solo kill for Skyler against the Hanabi. Max gonna be brought back to the team by Lemon on that split split. Max still in the midst of it all. Moreno gonna be zoned away for the airstrike comes down as well. Max with a decimet. Max not able to survive. That's Albert who seals the deal, and it's a 2-4-0. 2-4-0 and a free lord for our Archeoshi as they continue that mid-game dominance here. Going for the next objective in that bottom side, in the mid side as well. Taking everything from Bigatron Alpha and things are looking bleak. The problem is, right, Marky, they're relying so much on Marky, but he cannot withstand the damage from the Blazing Duet that, of course, Skylar can give. Marky oh. just secured that item, but at this point, he needs so many more items. He needs that um, Wind of Nature, obviously, to survive a little bit longer in those team fights and a, and a seed and a shield as well, because he's losing out on the range from the pressure that Clay has with the Feather Airstrike. That's absolutely correct. For him right now, he wants to try and try and do damage because he is the only one, one of the only members that can actually deal with the tank members. Here on the Edith can try and do that as well, but mainly it's gonna be on the shoulders of Marky. But now he is pressured to try and build damage to be relevant as, as a DPS source, also defensive items though. So it's a tough situation to be in, and RRQ is completely exploiting it. Now with the Lord, they're trying to make sure that they push all the ways together and get as many structures as possible. With their composition right here, the more towers they have, the more chances they're gonna get to punish Bigotron Alpha and catch them completely off guard, and they're gonna try and make a play for the base tower. Here. Nobody can catch Skyler, man. Moreno tries his best, but Skyler has a purify. Now to be Max who does the dive onto the back line. Oh, it's Key with the Numenau Blast onto two members. The AOE is massive with the knock up as well. Marky feels a whole lot on the back as Albert's forced to run away. Clay still with the purify, holding onto it. We'll just pop the wings by wings. And just like that, Bigatron Alpha have found a way back in the game, but there's still 5,000 gold down. I mean, they are going to be able to buy more time for their team, right? That was a beautiful Wombo combo and execution and really good chemistry between the members from Bigatron Alpha. The Numenon Blast hit, the knockup came in from Moreno with the ultimate as well. The damage came through and that's exactly how Bigatron Alpha needs to play these team fights. We're seeing a bit of a pattern here. If Moreno is able to actually land a very massive breath of the ocean, that seems to be what Bigatron Alpha needs to try and turn the tides around. The crowd control on top of the damage is what Bigatron Alpha needs. But RRQ are notorious for adapting and not falling for the same trick twice. So now you can bet that they're going to be looking for key as much as possible. The last thing they would want to do is try and fall to that same trap, the Numenon Blast, into the follow-up coming in from the Kadita. So. I think the pressure is now in the shoulders of Vin. On the Grok, he's been able to use that crowd control immunity to such a uh, high value. But, but now in the late game, it's not only about the crowd control. The damage is very real, so Vin needs to be more careful with his positioning as well. Hmm, I'm wondering, the later this game goes, technically, Bigtron Alpha, they have three sources of damage, right? Vir no Cure, Edith. It's gonna deal percent HP damage. So if Archeoshi go for a lot of HP in their composition, automatically Edith is gonna deal a lot of damage as well. A lot of magic damage. Yep, and for our one, so the only advantage they have right now is that range on clay. We can effectively zone out Marky and Ooh, Marky and Moreno. They have a chance right here, but look at this macro attempt being made by RRQ, just pressuring all over the map. Athena popped in already, that's gonna be Lord Contest forced in. Juno Cure, even for the knockoff, gets Clay. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Max is gonna be slain here, most probably with a DPS coming from Skyler, but that's gonna be Key, who pops the Numenau Blast in. They find Skyler, but there's no one else. Flip flip onto the back, Lemon retains his seed and taken down, but Lord has been slain already. RRQ still holding on to the gold lead, and Finn is gonna be able to find the wild charge! The taunt as well! Marky still with the nature, dealing, free hitting in the back, but will not be able to survive! Clay finds the kill with the range, Fear No Cure, the secondary damage dealer here, and when it comes to DPS, Magic, Bigatron Alpha still able to find a two for two, but they lose out in the trade because the Lord was Taken already. Man, that was a 
huge. What is going on, Arashi, with the, with the gold in particular? The gold is razor thin, it looks like, from here. Of course, Arashi is still ahead, but Clay just got shut down, so Big Engine Alpha has a bit more gold to work with, but without Marky, this Lord will be able to take down that base tower, and Arashi are looking for more. Look at Skyler and Marky, the goal difference is way too massive. Marky hasn't hit his item power spikes that he needs. Six items is what he needs. Wild charge can be popped in key as well. One of them not blast. No flicker. Oh. He does! He fights Skyler! And just like that, El Momento does not disappoint. He finds another moment where now Skyler has been shut down. Key, key, key. He's buying so much time for that adjustment for Marky, right? You mentioned with the goal difference that Marky needs a little bit more time, and that time is being bought by Key. He is always that person to be able to counter-engage the setups coming in from R. Hoshi, and so far, it's been massive for them. This is a danger when you are trying to crack open the base against Bigatron. They know what they can take advantage of. Key was looking for that play, but so was Moreno, roaming around behind the lines of Araki Hoshi. Uh -oh. It's a lot of threat here, and the same thing might just happen again. Bigatron are no notorious for being able to find opportunities like this, but Vin is looking for the exact same thing. Vin can be spotted, power of nature, anti-CC, wild charge, knocking three up, just used as a defensive. Both teams disengaging, again, Setting up once more. 16 minutes in, RQ had a 7,000. I think almost 7,000 gold at a certain point, but they're still not able to end. They just don't have the right kind of pressure, the kind of resources right now. They need to maintain the gold lead and keep the kitchen alpha down until they can get maybe a lord, some extra tools that they can get on the map to try and crack open this base. The first turret in the mid lane has been taken, but they are going to need a lot more than that. And they just have to use this range and be very aware of key. And they have to start timing his flicker, man. It's just way too dangerous. And Skylar in particular, if he does not have the purify, he needs to just stay really, really back because RRQ still has the option of re-engaging with the Blazing Duet. We saw that it worked really well against Marky in one of the previous team fights. If he comes in and Marky is unprepared for it, that might just be the opportunity that RRQ needs. And they have done, and they have switched up their playstyles like that before. Definitely, definitely. But at this point, I'm actually curious to see Marky's items, right? Definitely the WON should already be built in. And with that, it eliminates that disadvantage that the that Marky has on the Hanabi against that blazing sweat. And right now, we're gonna start to respect Marky's damage. Remember, in Ricochet, we are in the 17 minute of the game. So that power spike is definitely starting to hit as Araki Hoshi already half health on the next Lord. They don't have enough of an opening here. Oh. He actually is going to have his immortality pop. Guardians Bulwark popped in as well. Albert already rotating down for the airstrike. Going to be able to zone Marky away. Lemon pops in split split. All to the back lines. Key still able to disengage. The Earth Shatter as well to help Max out with the split split. Once again, is able to find Key on the back line. Max is going to fall. That's two members oh. down. Moreno finds a massive petrified, but the Purify is ready there. The wall is perfectly timed. And Bigatron Alpha, this might be their demise. RRQ with no minions. Do they decide to push in that top side or go for the Lord? They need to end this as soon as possible, like either way, right? Right now is a really great example, but right now Lemon gonna oh. get really hit slow, gonna get taken down. Oh! There you go, that's the kill with the flicker. Fear no cure finds a four-man Earth Shatter, but no one's there to follow it up. Oh, no, the minions yes. come in, and it's an open base for RRQ to take 1-0 in match two. RRQ now leading the series of a best of three here in match number two. Wow. What a game we're witnessing right now. Back and forth action for both these teams, and both of them are not backing down. It just comes to the select few moments for both these teams.